What's up, Kyle? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Camille Perra here with... Sarah Lyon. How's it going? On an amazing episode of The Bikini Show, brought to you by Maximum Beauty. Sarah, tell everybody about who we have on our show today. We have none other than the head Olympia judge, the spokesperson for all women, the spokeswoman for all women in the NPC and ISBB Pro Leagues, Miss Sandy Williamson. And wow, Camille, we're so excited. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, we're going to be, you know, we... We, we've all, heard, most, most of us have heard Sandy's uh, seminars before, and she has a wealth of knowledge, but we kind of want to dive into a little bit about like, who is Sandy? A lot of people don't know her background, and she's a pretty phenomenal woman. Um, she's the representative of our sport. She represents women in our, in our uh, sport. Um, she's a great role model, and she's just a positive, uh, she's, she's amazing. Um, she you, really is. Yeah. She you, Go ahead. Well, okay, sorry. But I was just saying you- We just you, both have so much to say. I know. When Before we started recording, we were just talking about how our experiences with Sandy, you know, when you walk out on stage and you see Sandy's face smiling, like it is so comforting when you see her there because she makes you just kind of feel relaxed and, and she makes you smile more. She makes you shine on stage. Yeah, she really is. I, yeah, I was like Camille was just saying, I, I was telling Camille, I was like, you know, the first time that I ever did a national show, all I, one of the biggest things that I do remember of that time was just coming out on stage. And I remember looking at the judges table because of course I was taught that to always make eye contact with the judges. For those of you who have never heard that before, make eye contact with the judges. <laughs> um, and I looked at Sandy and there she was just beaming. And like you said, it just really kind of calmed you down. It made you feel more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but yeah, just more at ease, I suppose. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to dive into a lot of questions. So we have a, you know, we can get to know her better and how she and Right. And I know, I'm sure a lot of people saw that Camille and I both posted today about that we were going to be recording and interviewing with Sandy. And I think a lot of people, you know, especially a lot, if you Google Sandy, if you look up anything that has to do with Sandy and bodybuilding, you find out a bunch of judging criteria. You find a bunch of comments that she's made about certain questions that she's been asked by, you know, whoever. And today we want to go into a more personal direction with it. We know that you guys have heard a lot of Sandy's answers countless times that you guys have access to seminars that she's put on, um, you know, and, and if you haven't yet, definitely go and search and find them so that you can get all that valuable information. We, of course, are going to touch on some of that here, but we wanted to give you guys a better inside scoop and look at who really is Sandy Williamson and how did she become Sandy Williamson that we all love and adore and email for criteria and feedback. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, I spill so, coffee all over me. Hey, Sandy. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hey, Miss Camille. How you doing? <laughs> Andy, I'm good. How are you? I'm just lovely. I'm so tired of cleaning. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can We've all gone through the phase of like painting houses and all these projects. It's like, okay, get back to normal now. I know. I, I actually have, cause you know, we live on a ranch. I actually have the guys show me how, cause we have like tons of stucco walls. I actually have them show me later today how to paint the stucco walls. <laughs> <laughs> That'll <laughs> occupy some time for you. Absolutely. And what's, what's Ted doing? Is he just sitting back watching you do all the, the work? Oh yeah. He, He's just doing what he normally does. He just kind of like watches the computer, watches TV, and him and John Tooman like spend hours, they're worse than women, spend hours on the phone. <laughs> yeah. I know, John, I talked to John the other day and he, we talked for about 40 minutes and he was telling me about his barbecue parts he was ordering. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I told Chris, I'm like, you know, you can tell that when we're getting really bored because we're talking about barbecue parts. <laughs> And, and I'm serious. I, I could send you a picture. I have my barbecue torn apart on the back. 
because I have to clean it so I can put it back together because I haven't used it like in two years. <laughs> You're usually busy and traveling during the warm months to do it. To oh, absolutely. It. absolutely. Oh my God. I said, I'm never going to complain anymore about traveling, doing emails. I'm, this, this is like a bunch of baloney. So that, that's the magic question. Have you caught up on your emails? Oh yeah, I did them. <laughs> I did them. I did them. I had three hundred and two. I did them all over Christmas holidays. Oh my gosh! You know, oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, the only thing I'm kind of doing now is, you know, some people will still send me like photos or something, or you know, just kind of like what's going to happen, you know, with qualifications, that kind of stuff, just the daily stuff. But yeah, I mean, I worked so hard to get all that done over Christmas because I was going to travel a lot in, in January, which I did, and I did travel a lot in January and February. Thank God, I got a lot of my traveling in, so at least my miles will still stay up there pretty good. <laughs> right? Can't yeah. lose those. Oh my God, no. We're all looking forward to life returning to normal soon. So Sandy, we, our show, it's uh, the Bikini Show, and we, <laughs> we have uh, guests on. We've had a lot of amazing professionals come on here, coaches. And it's a more casual setting. And we figured it'd be awesome for all of the viewers and all the bikini girls out there to get to know who you are. We see you so much on as a certain way, but maybe share some about something, some information about like how you started and who is Sandy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will never be seen because I said it to, to Jim and I, you know, and being that him and I go back, but I was, I started cleaning, I started in the beginning cleaning cupboards out. So I was looking at photos from when I competed. I even forgot I had them, to be honest with you. They're all for my, my ex-husband took them. So I sent him a picture of me on Soldiers and Sailors back in 1982. Wow. With the wow. Wow. Same yeah. venue till this day for the Pittsburgh Pro. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jim, went, Jim texts me back. It's actually on Easter. He texts me back. He goes, small trophy I said <laughs> I said I, I I said it was only fifth place he said to me oh the judges must have screwed up <laughs> I said I I said to him I said yeah that's why I gave up competing I said to make the judging better <laughs> well and you are an amazing judge too we all love you <laughs> but you just don't realize where the years have gone you know what I mean and it's hard to tell somebody that's very young you know what i mean that they're just gonna it's gonna zoom by yeah you know i, I you know when i think that i mean seriously i started i had a lot of health issues i was very heavy and then i was anorexic before it was ever you know in the you know in the textbooks or anything and so i went from 225 to 72 pounds at five foot seven and wow. yeah and i was and i never did any you know, I hid behind bleachers when we did the PE stuff, you know, I mean, like the, all those different challenging things that we had to do in the PE class and stuff when I was in school. So I actually got in, my sister got me into aerobics back in, who 1978. And yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, but we, yes, we, yes. And so I ended up doing that for a couple of years and I actually taught for about 13 years and stuff. Um, but my ex-husband back in 1980, he was the one, he was a, he was a football player. Uh, shot putter, you know, power lifter. He, you know, I would, I, and again, a lot of times when I say this, people like, you know, the young girls look at me like uh, that can't be, but in 1980, you, there was no, co at least in Reading, Pennsylvania, there was no co-ed gyms at that time. So yeah. yeah, we went, I went to this place called Women's World and I'd come home to my ex-husband and I'd say, oh my God, I did a hundred leg presses today, um, you know, with 10 pounds. And he'd be going, what the heck would you do that for? And I said, well, cause I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to make my legs stronger. He said, that's the dumbest thing. And he'd say, you need to do like, you know, 15, 20 reps. And I'd go, oh my God, then I'm going to get these huge muscles on my legs. I don't want that. You know, type of thing. Right. So it did, it went on for about a year. And then, well, actually it was 1978. And then in 1980, um, he asked me, he said to me about a bunch of, he worked at a steel mill, a bunch of the guys were going to go to uh, see this bodybuilding show uh, down in Philadelphia. And I was like, and I want to go there. Why? And he goes, oh, it's a whole weekend. You know, there gets a dinner thing and stuff. And I'm like, okay, but I'm telling you right now, I do not want to see women bodybuilders. 
I said, you know, end of story. Cause he was, like I said, he was trying to get me to, to really lift weights. You know what I mean? Not do what I was doing. And we went down and so I, you know, unbeknownst to me at the time, cause I knew nothing. I didn't even knew nothing about bodybuilding. Um, you know, I saw it was Rachel, you know, it was the first Miss Olympia by George Snyder. And it was, it was a, a, a dinner theater, you know, dinner type thing. And, and I remember, cause after the, after the show, then the, like Rachel and, and the girls, they would walk around talking to diff, you know different people and stuff. And she went by our table, and I'll never forget it. I looked at her legs. I'm like, she's in a size one jean. Monday morning, I signed up at the Y to lift weights, and but wow. it, but I couldn't lift at the Y. Uh, it took us me and another girl three months because we could join the Y, but we couldn't. We women were not allowed in the weight room. Wow! Wow! That's a, that's that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That is. Yeah, it goes and, back a long. Yeah, it goes back a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, back then there was no tanning products. I mean, there was nothing. You know, nothing. You know, no, I mean, we didn't have. We did buy off the Ciroc bathing suits. That's all that you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And especially where I come from, you know, it was a small town in Reading. You know, so you know, I. You know, it wasn't like I was in L.A. or maybe out in New York. You know what I mean? In the bigger cities, but I did. I judged even when I started judging. Because I started, I, when I competed, I competed like all in the Delaware, Pennsylvania, you know, New Jersey area and stuff. That's how I met actually John Kemper and his wife, Shirley, because Shirley competed. Well, they both did, but Shirley was competing. So a lot of times her and I would be, you know, in the, in the same show together. So even after I stopped competing, I, I judged for, you know, John Kemper for a long time till I moved out to, you know, to California. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. So when you were competing, it, it was women's bodybuilding. Uh, yeah, there was not a thought of anybody's mind. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, so, but you have to remember, too, the Miss Olympia at that time was in for about four or five years. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the exact dates, maybe 86 uh, to 90 or whatever was in Madison Square Garden in New York on Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they sold out every single year. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Madison Square Garden, too. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. What yeah. a venue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just then, times. Go ahead, Camille. Oh, no, you go for it. I was going to say, so we just were 1978, 1980. So then you talked about the trophy from 1982. What year was your first show? 19 at nine um 1981 it 1981. was actually in, yeah it was actually in pittsburgh okay yeah, it was in pittsburgh i i thought it was i actually thought it was at soldier sailors and i i really think it was i and i have to go back and try to look for other photos and stuff that are packed away in boxes um but i don't remember you know the show i knew there were 18 girls um Back then, again, if, I don't know if anybody even remembers anymore, but Candy Census was one of the up-and-coming amateur girls and a, another girl named Dr. Lynn Perry. And I knew she was flying in from somewhere. And I remember she won and Candy was uh, third. And the only reason I met Candy is because her and her husband were there and they were from right near where I come from back. We were there, that's Western Pennsylvania. We're all from Eastern Pennsylvania. So her and I got, you know, just because we're from like 20 minutes away from each other. So we got to talk and we got to, you know, then we started to, you know, correspond, of course. So you corresponded by going out to see them because we had nothing <laughs> else to correspond. <laughs> so, uh, but you know what I mean? So her and I, yes. So then I followed her because she became, you know, and I be pro bodybuilder, you know, I want to say by her third or fourth show, because um, we had gone up to see in 1983, the Olymp Miss Olympia was up in uh, Montreal, Canada. So we had gone up there, you know, to see her, you know, her, her compete. And she was actually involved with, because don't forget, the NPC at that time was only men. The, it was the mm. AFWB, the American Federation of Women's oh, right. Bodybuilding. Women, oh. yes. Yes. So um, Candy was starting to get involved with them, a li you know, a little bit, like from administration types, you know, type stuff. Yeah. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And then in 1980, I'm pretty sure it was 1984, um, the two, the two combined, the NPC and the AFWB combined to be one. And Candy was actually the first women's chairperson. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going way back. That's so awesome. And how long did, how long were you competing? And a lot of people don't know this about you, that you were a nurse too, for a long time. Oh, so are. Years. 
Oh yeah, I just yeah, I just grad yeah, I just renewed my license again. I just graduated from nursing to I mean from I graduated. Oh my god, I just retired <laughs> what, two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I worked full time the whole time. That's a that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. All these all these uh, things behind you, people don't know about. It's a, it's well, remarkable. but you know what though, Camille, I want to say that's what I'll, I think keeps me it, part of the sport. A obviously it keeps me young. I you know I I really do. I. I credit the sport to teaching me nutrition more yeah. than any, you know more than anything because you don't learn that in nursing school you don't learn that in medical school you know so that part obviously but it, it it's just um, the women that I've met and I mean again all the athletes but you know obviously I talk to more women than than the guys and it always just truly has always amazed me how many women that we have in the sport that you know when you learn what their whole life encompasses it never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And before you came on, Sarah and I were just talking about you as in our introduction, and we were we were talking about how um, a you're like uh, you're, you represent all the women in our sport. We look up to you. You're a great representative to us. But when I think most people who have ever been on stage, when they see your face, it's it's soothing. It's comforting. And, you know, we're, we have our nerves, we're, you know, we have our, we're in our head. And <laughs> yeah. when, we, when we see you there with your big smile on, it puts us at ease. And that's, that's remarkable. Like, a, you know. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I think, to be honest with you, that part actually comes because people say to me, you know, you know, like, because it was all men when I was competing. I, I can't remember a woman. At, at a local show, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, judging. And so they, you know, people say to me, oh, it's because, you know, there was no women, you know, when I was coming up. So, it, you know, and it's like, no, it actually, I think it more came from nursing because I did open heart for a long time and wow. it was always trying to keep the, the, and most of the time, you know, it's men and in the beginning, and it was always trying to keep them calm during that first night when they were just starting to wake up and, you know, they were still with on machines and stuff, you know what I mean? And yeah. they couldn't talk. So I think a lot of it I attribute to, you know, I do. I, when I think about it, I, I think that's where that whole calming effect and trying to put people at ease comes from. Well, it's very effective. It works. Oh, well, that's yeah. good. <laughs> and, and I say this all the time. I would trade bodies with any of you up there in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm telling you that, you know, because people do, they always say to me, what's going through your mind? And I just go, oh my God, I just love everybody up there. And I would take any of yours in a heartbeat if I could. <laughs> oh, you have such a hard job, especially on oh. the pro level. I mean, all the girls are so beautiful and they all look so amazing. You it's, know, I, when you get to that Olympia and the Arnold's and the top pro shows, it, it just, it blows your mind. The quality of the athletes is, it's just, it, it, I'm serious. This last couple of years, it's just gone through the roof. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So what? What goes through your mind? Because I think everybody wonders, like, you know, everyone says, like, the job, the judges have a hard job. Like, what kind of, like, and you guys are fast. You guys are, it, it's, you guys are, you know, telling your, the points up. And it's a very, very fast paced process that you guys are going through. What, what tell us a little bit about maybe the, the. I, I think, I think the thing is, it's like, like. It, it seems like it's always easier. For, I mean, don't get, because we have a, you know, a process on how you become a judge, but, and sometimes it takes people, some people a lot longer to become a judge and then other people, you know, and I, you know, I can name a whole bunch of them, but it's like, they come and they do their first test judging and like, you just know right away, they got they, it. They have an eye and, for it. Yes, exactly. You know, and lots of times it's because they followed, you know, the sport in some, you know, fashion one way or the other and stuff, you know. Um, but you know, it is, and as much as, you know, you always hear the East coast, West coast and the me and the Steve thing and stuff, it, when we're sitting at the table I, and I've done this so many times now, especially the last couple of years, you know, Steve and I, we wait and we hand each other, whether, you know, I'm handing him the, the what, who I think is the first call out for men or whether he's doing it for women. And like, we don't say anything and be, you know, why the, everybody's doing their individuals. And cause now it's become a game and it's so funny because I'm, I swear to anybody, you can videotape us. I'm telling you, most times, if I don't give him the same exact six that he gives me, it might be that I'm giving him five out of the six. Wow. And it's the same Very way good. back. Yeah, it is. And it's the same way back with him. And obviously, Tyler and I are this, you know, the same way. 
you know, and I mean, I, you know, Steve and I, you know, especially me, I mean, I've got more years than anybody and Steve, you know, is next and you think somebody as young as Tyler, you know what I mean? And yet he's got, again, he's just got, and obviously he was brought up through the sport, you know what I mean? So, but he's just got an, you know, an amazing eye and, you know, Camille, I say this all the time. He just has so much focus for yeah. a 25 year old. That's, and he's so focused on the judging. It just, it, that focus at that young age just amazes me. When I was at, um, I, I, when I, I have only seen, okay, I've competed in front of Tyler many times and, and it's a different perspective than when you're watching in the audience. And when I was at, I think it was the last, it was a Spectrum show. When he it was, was the Sacramento. We brought him out to the hat. And I was watching him and I was blown away because I've, I've always been on stage on the other end, but watching him with the process, he, he's, he's amazing. He, you're absolutely, oh. and he's like, yes. he is li very calibrated with you, Steve, and everyone else that's at that, you know, on the Olympia and Arnold stage. Yeah, no, no, he, he really is. He's just, uh, you know, I always say this, that the NPC is going to be definitely in, in good hands. He, especially from the judging standpoint, he just, that's, you know, that's always been his focus, you know, from the beginning for him, you know, and now obviously he has to branch out and do more from, you know, from the administration and trying to grow the sport, especially, I can't imagine what a 25 year old is going through these days, not being able to, you know, to travel and do, and just be a normal 25, but he really does. He focuses so hard on the, the judging and, you know, even at the SAC, you know, when they got done with the men and he went to hand me the, you know, the mic to do the women, I looked at him, I'm like, hell no, you're on a roll, honey, go right ahead. <laughs> Back in. He's, he's just, he's good at what he does. He's just so good at what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Natural. Yep. Absolutely. He is. He absolutely is. Um, so what are, I know Spectrum is rescheduling some of their shows and picking out dates. <laughs> and, and, you know, Sarah's a promoter as well. Um, how, how, I, I don't think athletes see, I think a lot of athletes see that, you know, there's all these postponing and cancellations. They don't understand the process and that we have all these regulations that we're, we're not even aware of yet. How well, are you handling that? And well, and I think that's that's the biggest part because don't get me wrong, you know, you know what I, I mean. You know, it's everybody. We as a society, we want everything yesterday. We don't even want to wait two days. You know what I mean and stuff. And that's the problem because no one government. You know, everybody's saying, well, you know, we're gonna start to look at relaxing stuff on this date, on May first, on May fifteenth, whatever the date is. But you have no guidelines like when they get there, what are they even thinking about? Are, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and I, I mean, California, I, you know, again, it could surprise us, but I, California, I don't think it's going to open up for a long time. As far as, I mean, I think more small businesses, they will and stuff, but as far as things with groups and crowds, yeah, I mean, and I, so as a promoter, I mean, and I will be honest, I said this, I did it with a pot, I know thing with um, Noel last week and you know, a lot of promoters, we're all looking at, okay, how could, you know, because when we were going to do the Gov Cup back in March, when, you know, um, it, you know, obviously it was the week after, right after they closed everything, but we were already looking at, okay, if we get X amount of athletes and they only, at that time they were saying no crowds more than 200, no people could congregate more than 250 at that time. So, and we're lucky with the McKellen Center. Yeah, I mean, Camille, you've been there. It's, you know, it, yes, we have a huge amount of space and we have a lot of those small rooms backstage. So we could separate the athletes really well and not have people on, you know, on top of each other. So we were very, we're very fortunate with the type of setup that, you know, that we have, but we were already looking at maybe doing just NPC women, you know, selling tickets just for that, doing pre-judging finals, clear the auditorium, NPC men, you know, same thing. Then the IFBB portion, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. even if we had to go for IFBB women, I, you know, we were looking at different ways that we could maybe get around it maybe include some live streaming, you know, if, if, you know, we're, if we're not allowed to have audience at all. But the thing is, the, th the only thing with that is, again, athletes are going to have to remember, I don't know that it's possible to do that and right. not take a, well, Sarah, you know that, not take huge a huge shock. loss. Because, you know, is the venues going to come down with, you know, it, it, the amount of, you know, what we pay to use the venues and stuff? I mean, I'm hoping 
there'll be some negotiation, you know what I mean? Because they're not going to have a lot of businesses, you know, coming in with events and stuff. But yeah. you know what I mean? If you just look at what our numbers is right now, it, it's going it, to, you know, we're really, because we're, we're, I mean, we're really looking at, can we do this? How can we make this happen in Tamer? And Ted and them talk, you know, that's the one nice thing about California now. We're, we really work well together with Southern and Northern California and stuff. And so we're all talking about, okay, how could we make this happen? You know, um, even Joe Pascula with, you know, with his show and stuff, we're thinking, well, maybe we'll just combine the pros and, you know, we're trying to see how can we get the pros out there that they could qualify for the Olympia and stuff. You right. know what I mean? So these are, are things that are really going through the promoter's mind. And a lot of, I mean, at least the people that I'm talking to, we're just trying to say, what can we make the numbers work that we could break even, maybe lose a couple thousand, but you can't be losing, you know, 15, 20, 30,000. I mean, that's, that's not feasible for, you know what I mean? For any right. of our promoters. Right. Yeah. But I just want athletes to know that the promoters are really looking at different ways that once we, you know, get some ideas on what our limitations are going to be, you know what I mean? How we can, how we can do this. Yeah, I mean, even for Chris and I with our gym, we're, you know, waiting for Governor Newsom, even not necessarily to announce a date, but even just give us an idea of what the different phases will look like. Yeah, so what's he think? So we can all start planning because that planning process is going to take a lot of time and energy to make everything work. Yeah, well, even, in, I mean, even my sister and I, right after the Arnold's, my sister and I, you know, uh, we're out in Palm Springs and stuff. And even the two weeks we were out there, we went from grocery stores that, you know, were open and just functioning regular. And Palm Springs was basically closed. I mean, you were only supposed to go to the grocery store or to a pharmacy and, and you know, back to your house. To the, the end of the second week, we had, you know, the plastic plexiglass by the cashiers. Yeah. Now we wear masks, you know, gloves. You know, it, it did not happen overnight. It took a couple weeks for the stores to be able to do that. So the gyms, like you said, the gyms are going to be no, you know, no different. And then for our, our athletes to be able to get on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was, yeah. I was watching your, your um, interview with Noel. That was awesome. And I, it's been, it's been great that I think since everyone's been kind of like shut down and we can't see each other that a lot of people are feeling disconnected, but the fact that like you've been going on with uh, Noel and I saw it with Joe with uh, border clash and then coming to our show, it helps people stay connected still and, and see these different sides. And you have to remember and being that for 30 years, I did not let JM take a photo of me and post it. I told <laughs> Tyler, he owes me big time. <laughs> I said, not only did I learn Instagram, I said, I'm all over freaking Instagram and, and, and watch sitting and talking and watching my face on the video is the worst thing in the world for me. <laughs> I think everybody feels that way about themselves, but I yeah, like this. we had this, to adjust, <laughs> but this is nice though, because I like, I see both of you, but I'm only a little thing in the corner. So I actually can block that out really easy. And you know, what, yeah. you know what's kind of cool. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a, it says stop video. There's a little arrow up. You can actually change your background to really cool backgrounds too. Oh, really? Oh, so it's not our houses. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. Pick, um, it, it, click, it says choose virtual background and then you can pick all these different uh, backgrounds. Oh yeah. <laughs> now you're in Hawaii or in the Caribbean, one or the other. I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> I want to be here right now. <laughs> right. You know what, though? I like this, though, because when Noelle and I were doing the video, the interview, or whatever, the other day, you know, people ask about posing. And sometimes it's like we're about wellness, especially and stuff. And so I was trying to figure out, okay, how can we do something that I can actually show some of my PowerPoints? Like, you know what I mean? Like I do when oh, yeah. I do my seminars and stuff, you know so what I mean? So people have a visual. The cool thing about the Zoom um, and this the Zoom, this is what the platform that like all the schools are using for. Well, that's, that's and, what I heard. But you can actually uh, share your screen. So like say you have, you can have like a lot of people come in here um, and it's just on you and you can have a uh, share screen so they can see you, your PowerPoint from, from the Zoom. Um, you can do a lot of really cool things with it. Well, that's so obviously now that's my next thing to learn. <laughs> you got the time <laughs> you have you have no idea when I first because I you know I kind of help oversee Texas now so I've been trying to do a lot you know trying to get because they have a new website a new you know um Instagram and stuff so we've really been trying to get 
you know, the Texas athletes to realize, to get all the information, you know, on the whole state, that that's where you should go and stuff. But I, I, you have no idea. It took me two weeks in hundreds of videos. And, you know, everybody texted me going, it looks pretty good, but you should have done, you know, <laughs> I was so happy I got it up there. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. There's oh. definitely right here with all the tech stuff. Oh, oh my God. Yes. So, you know, but I always say you're never too old to learn. So right now, don't get me wrong. I still haven't got the thing about the story thing because Noelle and I, she sent me the video. I couldn't get it up on NPC USA Texas story to save my butt. So next time we'll try. Well, well you can only save it if whoever initiates it. So since Noelle was Spectrum initiated it and saved it to theirs, since you were a guest brought on, you can't save it to your phone. Oh, but she can't send it to me? No, she can't say she can't send it. So it doesn't save. I, I think some Couldn't, people can't. Save, can't you go back and save the story? And then I haven't been able to. And that's why we use this is so you can record it all and then post it. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good to know. So maybe that's what we need to do then. We need to, you know, I mean, look at like the Zoom platform and see if that would be a better, a better way to get the video and then to post it on Instagram. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or YouTube or, and you can uh, have a link, a link there, but when you're there. Now, wait, now I have to learn YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little much. <laughs> yeah, it's more than I want. It's more than I want. You're doing, you're doing awesome. I still, the fact that you even got an Instagram account, everyone's like, oh, Sandy got an Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> My, oh, but anyways, so yes. <laughs> uh, so what would you say are the top three most commonly asked questions you get? I mean, obviously it's always what the judges are looking, you know, for that, that is probably the hallmark. You know, and I, and I say this and I, and I, you know, I'm not trying to trivialize it or anything, but I really do. I tell athletes, if you're a bikini, you know, especially cause that's what this platform is supposed to be for, go to the, you know, like if you're an amateur, go to the USA, go to the nationals, go to the universe. You know what I mean? Go to those, the junior USA, the junior nationals, especially when you're just starting out, you know, go to those shows and look at whatever the class winners, or maybe even the top five from your yeah. class and everybody can do this. Cause I do that. If I've not been at a show, that's what I do. I pull up whoever, you know, whoever sends me their photo, I go back. I, you know, I pull up their name. I look to see what show they did. I look to see the winners of the show, the top five, just so it's not so much that I'm judging that, but I want to see what the lighting looked like. You know what I mean? What the, yeah. you know, what the caliber yeah. of muscularity versus, you know what I mean? Cause some shows you look at and you go, Ooh, they really look muscular. But then when you look at the whole lineup, you go, no, the stage and the, the lighting there is making them look a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? And stuff. So yeah. from, you know, so, but I tell that to athletes all the time, go to those bigger shows, look at which, but again, you got to take it with a grain of salt is from that, especially from the conditioning. Well, and from the size, but mainly the conditioning because the photos are always going to make you look a l much tighter, tighter than yes. than you looked on stage. So I, you know, my thing is always, please don't get photo ready for a show. You know what I mean? But it would give you an idea of where, you know, if you're really, you know, really small, then it tells you, okay, I've got, a, I've got more development to do. If, you know, if you're a little bit more on the, the softer side, then you go, okay, well, I've got to come in. It, you know, again, like I said, they're not, it's not foolproof, but at least it gives you an idea of what the quality will look like when you get there so that you kind of have a goal of what you're shooting for. Yeah. Um, so it's always the, what the judges are looking for. That's always the biggest. And what, another thing too, is I think people think, that, okay, so they look at Issa, they look at whoever it is, Janet, or they look at Angelica and they say, you know, or yourself and they say, oh, I have to be like that developed or that lean. And, and I tell everybody, no, if you look at that first call out at the Olympia, those physiques are so different in, in the type of muscularity, in the, their structure and stuff. It, it, I'm telling you, it's so much different than bodybuilding, where it was always like the the, you know, the more muscular, the more symmetrical and the best condition was your winner. It, it, it's actually what looks good on that athlete's body because I could take the same amount of muscularity and put it on somebody else and it's going to look like way too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? On their, on their, on their bone frame, on their structure and also the way they present it. You know what I mean? So I tell athletes, that's the one, if you're an athlete, 
this is a great time to compete, whether it's figure, you know, bikini, wellness, because we really do look at, it's just what physiques or what athletes, when they step out, just catch our eye. And it doesn't have to be the biggest or the most muscular, the most symmetric, you know what I mean? It's just what looks good on, on that person's frame. The entire package. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what we're all going to look like with all our jewelry and hair and makeup and our mask on, that should be very <laughs> interesting. Yes. Yeah, it's all you, Noelle, talking about the blinged masks. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Noelle and I talked about, I said, everybody's going to now order bling masks to go with their suits. Yes. <laughs> Smiles don't count anymore. <laughs> Hell no. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, I said, even when you get, we get, we have to have to all go back and get our driver's license redone so that the TSA person knows who we are. That would actually uh, be amazing because I get, I get like cheek cramps when I'm up on stage. So that way we don't, we can just be like, like this. <laughs> oh yeah. And you won't, yeah. You won't have to worry about And eyes are going to really come into play because you're going to really want to <laughs> do up your eyes because that's the only thing anybody's going to see. <laughs> be interesting this year um let's see okay second um you know i mean i get asked about the suit and the hair all the you know all the time and stuff and you know i you know again it's it's generalizations but i always say with the suit i always tell girls especially when you know so they don't have to spend a lot of money especially when they're starting out about that deeper colors just to give them more contrast you know what i mean i do think when athletes are starting out i think makeup by a professional, you know, and I'm, you know me, I'm not a big one. Like I just said, I'm spending money. I don't think you need a new suit every time you compete. I don't think you need new shoes every time you compete. Um, but I think makeup is probably where I would, I would tell women, especially to that first couple shows, at least, you know what I mean? To, yeah. to, to definitely get it done professionally, you know, cause I have a lot of pros when I travel overseas, you know, like, cause I always do Seoul and do Japan and stuff. And it's amazing. Cause a lot of the pros at, when they go overseas do their own. And you know, I'll say, oh my God, it looks so, you know, and, but they've learned, you know what I mean? Over the years. Right. And, but I think, I don't think like new athletes getting on stage, especially, you know, Sarah, you know, with the stage lights and stuff, mm -hmm. if you don't have that perspective, you know what I mean? Oh, you yeah. No, yeah. And it, you know, again, not maybe at the, you know, the initial contest, but you know, as you move up the ranks, mm -hmm. all that, you know, the, the hair, the makeup, especially the makeup can really come into play, you know what right. I mean? To the judge's eyes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I've seen girls that, I mean, as we all have, I'm sure we see girls that look great, even on the national level, and their bodies are great, their suit looks good, but then, you know, their makeup, maybe they just didn't put any on, or it's just way too light, and it just yes. really throws it off, um, at least for me. No, um, it does, absolutely, because again, if you get washed out on stage, it just kind of makes the judge, you know, his eye, especially if there's 35 people in your class, it's very easy when the judges are looking at that lineup to kind of just kind of gloss over you. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so yeah, yeah. I, so I, I really do. I think makeup, you know, in the beginning, because Noelle and I were talking about like where athletes, because you know, again, athletes are going to are like everybody else. There's a lot of athletes that are out of work, not money coming in and stuff. You know, and I said, you know, I think if you get away with maybe if I had a choice, I would tell people, I think you can get away with maybe doing your own hair because as long as it's styled, it's mm -hmm. going to look, you know what I mean? That, again, I think that, but I said, I probably make it though. It's one place I probably would tell them, if you can, you don't want to skimp, especially, yeah. like I said, when you're first starting out, because it can make such a, you know, you, you don't know how much those lights are going to wash you, you know, wash you out on, on, on stage. Um, I have to say, Sandy, there's a question I get asked quite frequently, or I should say it gets pointed out to me quite frequently, and I don't know why, but I've had so many girls mention to me, oh, do I need to color my hair to be brunette? Because there's no top blonde on the bikini stage. And I'm just like, I don't know why anyone would think that. I was like, no, no obviously you know, there just hasn't been a good enough blonde yet to fit you know, that know, place. Well, because I think what's happening is coaches and trainers are telling the girls to, cause I've had girls say to me, oh, I, I was a blonde, you know what I mean? I mean, a natural <laughs> blonde. And you know, and they said, but they said the darker hair will show up better on stage. And if you go back like 10, when we first started bikini, it used to be so funny. Blonde. It would be blonde, 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 one brunette. Yeah. It was, it's just, it, I don't know. It's just changed over the year. And yet, like I said, on the amateur level, we just had somebody get their pro card shaped head. I, you know, hope Candace Lewis doesn't get upset or Candace Carter doesn't get upset for me saying this, but I did a, 
uh, seminar with her she was at in Houston back in February, the end of February or end of January, anyway, somewhere back there. And um, she was there and she has almost like no hair. It's just like little stuff. She looked adorable, adorable. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I said to her, I said, oh my God, why didn't you compete like that? Oh, everybody said I had to have my hair long. I said, oh my God, she looked amazing amazing she it, and that's what i tell people it it's you know not again not every girl could pull that off right but it looks so cute on her and yet i know you know coaches judges you know other halves whoever it's like oh no you gotta go long because everybody else is long and she it she would have pulled it off in a heartbeat it she looked everybody there was just amazed at how cute she looked Oh my yeah. gosh, I believe it. And Sandy, that remind that makes me think of, and I'm sure this is what you're referencing, is the pro card um, with the girl with the shaved head. Was yes. that at, na at Nationals? Yeah, it was either it was that one of those last shows toward the end. Yeah, of the she came out like guns blazing. You guys put her in the middle of the first call out. And I remember the crowd just went wild. I mean, the crowd, it was like everyone was friends with this girl because so many people just hadn't seen a uh, girl, especially in the bikini division with, you know, no hair, if yeah, you will, yeah. you know, but come again, out and win. And it was great. She, she looked but, phenomenal. Oh my God, she rocked it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I tell people. I, I would say you want something that you feel come and you could tell she yeah. had so much confidence and you know what I mean? She knew her physique looked good and that comes, it comes across. Do you know what I mean? And, and again, don't be wrong. You know, everybody's more, their comfortability on stage is, you know, is different. You know what I mean? Some people do, even after they've competed for a long time, feel very uncomfortable. You know what I mean? They don't feel, at, you know, at ease. But you could tell she just felt so comfortable and, and so good with what she brought to the stage. And it, it came across. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, that was really exciting. That was very cool yes. to see. Was definitely. it the Daraja Hill when she turned pro or? No, this was just in 2019 Nationals. Um, I, think it was, I think you're right. I think it was at Nationals. Yeah, or, or yeah, the one that I I remember. Yeah. Um, Adaraja, I know that she had short hair when she did nationals in 2018, but her conditioning um just wasn't there in my opinion. Looking at her pictures, um, but she came back in 2019 when she did like the Tampa Amateur and won the overall there. And that's when she started wearing her her big curly hair, which looked so good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, like I said, I was just really nice, like I said, and it was nice because I keep saying that to girls all the time, and then they'll say to me, yeah, but my coach said, or my husband said, or my boyfriend said, and it's like, but so I was so nice to see somebody come out like that and just look so, you know, so amazing, because yeah. I get, you know, we have so many 18, 19, 21, 22 year old girls doing it. And, you know, I get asked all the time because somebody will have blue hair or pink hair. And it's like, oh, my, my coach told me, I, you know, I, I should, you know, dye my hair. I should. And I'm like, oh my God, you're 22. You look gorgeous with blue hair when you're 22. You know, like yeah. I said, 68, yeah, I'm not sure that would, it would work. <laughs> but, but it's, you know what I mean? But that's, and it's the same with the tattoos. You know what I mean? Again, if you've got a whole body part covering, could it affect you? Absolutely, because it could take away from some of the depth of, you know, of development and stuff. But again, you know what I mean? It's when you're 20 some years old and you've got a tattoo on your leg, on your arm, on your whatever. It's like, it, it looks cute. You're supposed, you know what I mean? That's what you're supposed yeah. to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's great for everyone to hear because I think no matter how many times people hear that from other people, you know, they just get all and caught up in their head. Up. Yes, and don't cover it up. <laughs> no, it'll make your tan look muddy. <laughs> oh my God, yes. And there's nothing you can do to make hide it on stage. We still know it's there, so. <laughs> it's just a bigger blur. <laughs> oh my God, it is. It's like you have this big mud spot on your body. It really, you know, it really does. And, and I'm sure like backstage or, you know, in your hotel room, it looks good. Right. But the minute you get under those lights, it really, it, it, unfortunately, it really makes a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, uh, we wanted to ask you a little bit about wellness. I know everyone is talking about wellness. <laughs> Um, not again. <laughs> what's that? In my, in my crystal, now wait, I gotta get my crystal ball and my wand down. Okay, I'm ready. We will show, we at the Santa Cruz seminar, when you were there speaking, um, Kyle, our, our videographer, he did a great job of capturing what you said. So public announcement, everyone to watch a full seminar with Sandy doing her wellness seminar 
go check that out here. But we'll let Sandy give a, a little brief. Oh, but yeah, breakdown. I mean, not, I mean, if you, I mean, again, this again, general generalities here. It's not, you know, because obviously every woman is different, but right. most women do not have these broad shoulders and narrow hips, okay, which serves you well. You know, now it seems like in bikini a little bit more, definitely in figure, you know what I mean? Um, but a lot of women have narrow shoulders and much wider, you know, pelvic spans. And to me, wellness is made for that, you know, with that type of structure. Again, though, there's a lot of development in that lower body. So again, and it's such a personal issue, do you wanna go, you know, cause I have a lot of bikini girls, I will say to me, oh, I was told I should do wellness. And my first thing is, absolutely you have the structure for it do you want to add that much muscle to your body you know mm -hmm. and lots of times and more times than not i do i get oh yeah i'm fine with that you know what i mean but then i have some girls that are like oh, no i don't really then that's not the way you want to you know right. want to go um right. because I, you know, if you look at the girls from this year's amateur obviously the one girl that was second in the i think it was the a class she had won a uh, muscle contest tamer show back in january mm -hmm. um you know um Oh my God, an amazing body. Uh, again, you know, because people always say, oh, you know, um, like judges have, you know, judges kind of know who's going to be good when they come in. And we do, because we're, you know, we're human like everybody else. But again, more times than not, you walk in and I can't, I could tell you story after story about shows that I went to that I thought, okay, this is the forerunner or that's the forefront runner. And then uh, I get it. Well, Jeremy Buendia, classic case, went to men's physique. Jason Poston and Alex Canera at the time, top men's physique competitors, okay? Figured they were gonna battle it out, you know what I mean? We'd seen them multiple times, and two rookies beat both of them. And so, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. Perfect uh, example. Yeah, it is, absolutely. But the girl, and again, I think when, when people saw pictures, I, you know, me in particular, because I, I wasn't at that show, um, but when I saw pictures, and, I, and I'm horrible, because I don't remember what her name was, but I obviously from Brazil, um, and then she came to Arnold's, she actually got second, she ended up losing to, you know, the girl, that, this girl that beat her, um, who, again, just an amazing physique. But I think this is a place where the U.S. athletes were always kind of, you know, had like an edge lots of times when we got to the, it, like to the Arnold's or to the Olympia and stuff with a lot of international athletes. Um, we were much farther ahead in bikini because we did bikini here a lot longer than mm -hmm. other countries. You know what I mean? And this is where wellness is going to come in because wellness, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to, you know, to do a lot of the muscle contest shows down in Brazil. And those girls are amazing, 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 amazing. And they draw crowds like nobody's business. I mean, that's down in, you know, at least in Brazil, that's who they come to see. They come to see those wellness, uh, wellness competitors. Um, so, but I think both of them, I thought the class winners from the Arnold, it, it, that's who you want to pull your photos up with. Those girls are definitely, um, you know, and I, you know, to be honest with you, the girl that won the, the overall and got her pro card, the reason that she beat the other girl, you know, from, uh, a previous show was it was conditioning we just again amazing body and i'm sure people again I, I don't follow but i'm sure people went on and said oh but you know the second place competitor she was much more conditioned she you know what i mean yeah she was much better physique but that we don't want to see that much conditioning you know what i mean you didn't have to be that right. conditioned in, in in wellness and so you know because that happens you know obviously a lot in bikini too you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. the best body from a physique standpoint doesn't win and then, you know, trainers and athletes, and everybody gets upset. And it's like, you know, I'll agree with them. I'll go, absolutely, hands down the best physique up there. But just the, not enough. I mean, just a little bit too much for that the division that you're in. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. just so much more. It's so yes. much more. Yeah. So but much yes. more. So wellness, I mean, wellness, you, I, you do. I think your upper body is going to be more like a figure competitor. I mean, I mean, not, no, I shouldn't say it. A little bit it's gonna be in between because I think it's a little bit more honestly than bikini um, but it's not gonna be near as conditioned as you're gonna see in figure sure and the legs again are gonna be more on the same conditioning that you see in bikini just a lot more muscle oh right. down. yep yeah right yeah <clears throat> I can't wait. I am so anxious. I was so looking forward to the Pittsburgh Pro to see oh, it. I was, I and know. I, was I, too, I, I too wasn't yeah. at the muscle contest with it here in America. So I am well, anxiously yeah. awaiting that. And we have, um, we have a couple bikini pros that have, were contacting me like last year. 
saying, is this something where I should go? And, you know, again, they're master's bikini, so they already have a, a good deal of muscle on. And again, I, I'm assuming, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm assuming a lot of them, because we get a lot that come from like track and field, soccer, sure. that type of thing. So they were always getting knocked down because A, they were way too muscular in their lower body, especially when you do an open show, you know what I mean? And, and you're a little bit older, so you've already got that muscle maturity that the 22-year-old does it. you know what I mean? doesn't have and stuff so I was I'm really anxious because they sent me you know a couple photos you know as they progress as their progression over the last couple of months and it's just going to be really nice I was really anxious to see what they would look like you know what I mean on stage yeah. so it's, it's you know when we get there it's going to be you know it's going to be it is it's going to be exciting I think we're all waiting to see who's going to transfer over and make that switch it's yeah, yeah. no fight yeah. out Yes, I was very fortunate because I did do a show in um, uh, Texas. It was Branch, uh, Branch Warren's and uh, his partner Brian's, and it was so. So it was the first wellness amateur, you know, down there. And I mean, obviously, the girl wasn't at the level that the girl from Brazil was, but when she walked out, it was like, oh my God, she could just she. It was just a great package at that level for wellness. You know what I mean? And yeah. So it was, yeah. So I think we're gonna see a lot more of that. Than I think we thought we would see, at, you know, in the in the U.S. Because, like I said, a lot of these other countries, you know what I mean, are much farther along with the development in that in that division than you know our, the U.S. would be. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of it's genetics too in these different in these different areas. Oh my God, absolutely! Abs oh, hands down, absolutely. Your culture and it, you know, it, it, unfortunately, it plays a part in every sport. You yeah. know, not every, yeah, not every kid that plays, you know. Uh, little league baseball i mean uh basketball and stuff is going to be six foot seven and be in the nba it's just like right. yeah. you know what i mean yeah when you're at you know when you get to the top of whatever sport it is genetics are gonna you know are are gonna play a part absolutely yeah. those brazilians they're dominating oh <laughs> my god oh my god i'm telling you the, those wellness girls though oh man the best legs in the business oh yeah that's for sure <laughs> oh uh, the first time i saw that's the first thing i did when i first muscle contest I did in Brazil, I walked in, I came, came in at check-ins for wellness. I didn't realize it. And I just remember they were all, you know, by that step and repeat banner. And I looked at Tamer and I went, where did those legs come from? I was just blown away. I, they just, they, they just have such beautiful development. Yep. They do. Yeah. So I have one last question for you. Um, what I was thinking about this earlier today what is your like most favorite year or era during the whole time you've been involved with the sport? I mean, oh God, this is gonna this is gonna be a hard one. Um, I think probably. I mean, obviously, being part of the whole women's bodybuilding at Madison Square Garden is something I'll never. You know what I mean? And. Also, my times when I did the world championships, because when you go overseas to compete for your country, you know, with like 100 other countries, I think that's something that, you, you know what I mean, is a once in a lifetime. Amazing. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I've been fortunate enough, I did it, oh my God, what, 20 times, 30 times at least. Um, wow. But probably, you know what, the, when we started to add the divisions, I would probably say in the, in, in the late 90s, just because we had just started to add fitness, and we had such an overwhelming response to it. And even as it transitioned into, you know, into um, uh, bikini and then men's physique and just seeing that, you know, because my whole thing from the beginning was weight training for women, you know, because I grew up in an era where, again, women did not do any kind of weight training for sports. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was all about how many, how less, how many least amount of calories you could eat during the day to keep thin. You know what I mean? It was all about, you want to be model. You want to be, you know, five, 11, six foot, you want to be 105 pounds. I mean, that's kind of, you know, where that the look, you know, for young women were in, in our country. So to see women with curves and being able to eat and not live on, you know, a thousand calories a day, that's what, ended up attracting, you know, attracting me to the sport and stuff. Um, so, but as you saw, you know, as you saw it develop and how many different, different types of bodies could get on stage and compete and still balance with it, just that whole growth period was just really exciting. Now looking back, you know yeah. what I mean? Was just, it was really neat to be, you know, to be part of that. Yeah. You just uh, brought something up that you reminded me that I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> Um, you, when you were 
getting into the sport and you had experience in eating disorder. Um, last year at the seminar at our women's circle, we were talking about um, how the sport of bodybuilding can really help women, you know, get comfortable with nutrients, feeding your body properly, eating to, to grow and for health rather than, you know, in a constant deficit. Um, I think a lot of women have experienced that where the sport has, I wouldn't necessarily say save their lives, but has made a huge impact on the way they view their body, taking away that fear or stigma of food and changing your whole perception. Oh, absolutely. 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 Like I said, I learned nutrition from, you know, from bodybuilding. I know, you know what I mean? Um, Cause like I said, I always came from an era where like we didn't eat all day long and you only ate one meal and you right. try to keep calories. So that was like, vegetables and salads and the little about of you know of protein and stuff and yeah. just to see how women like you said you know because I, I you know I talk to bikini athletes and I can always tell like who which trainers are really good because I talk to athletes and they're not a deficit they're they might not they might not like the food they're eating <laughs> but they're not starving, but you know what I mean? You know, yeah. you're 16 weeks of eating plain fish and you've had it with that, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they're not starving. Yeah. Right. They're not, you know what I mean? They're not in a calorie deficit. Yeah. But you know what I mean? And, and I see, I mean, I do. And cause we do, we have so many amazing trainers, you know, all, all over the, our country and, and the world that I've met internationally that are horrified when they hear that girls are doing three, four hours of cardio and, you know, are, are down to a thousand calories and stuff. And again, might you do that for a show because, you know, you start, you decided to do one and now you only have, you know, you know, X amount of weeks rather than your full, you know, your full prep time prep. and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We always do that kind of stuff, but you know what I mean? But not, yeah. not, not long-term. No, not as the general is to get it. You know what I mean? And right. so yes, absolutely. Uh, hands down. And I can always tell because you can tell what happens when the girls walk away from competing. I'll see them because they come to a show and stuff. And there's one girl in Vegas. I'll never, and she's pregnant and stuff. And <clears throat> excuse me, she looked no different than when she competed. And yes. it's like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you knew she wasn't in a calorie deficit and didn't mess up her hormones. You know what I mean? And stuff because she didn't gain all this weight. She didn't, you know what I mean? You know, have trouble getting, you know, phasing in back into eating like, you know, more normal and stuff and not worrying about the competition thing. And yeah. so I, Yes, I can always tell that. You know what I mean? You know, and so that's the part of the sport that makes me happy to see right. that. Right. Yeah. And those who have been able to adapt this as a lifestyle, so there's not these radical shifts oh. in prep and off season. Yeah, no, absolutely Korea. You could not that you know what? That's probably the biggest thing is this is not like a twelve week or sixteen week program and then you go you know what I mean? It's just like even if no matter what diet you go on. They always tell you, you're not going on a diet for 12 weeks, two months, whatever. If it's Weight Watcher, you know, whatever program it is, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's why I tell athletes all the, you know, all the time, this is a lifestyle. I mean, if you were getting ready for a show and you had to back off, you're just going to eat more of the foods of the same type of foods. Right. Just more. You know what I mean? So that right. when you find out like, oh my God, a month from now, we, you know, this show is going to go. It looks like, you know what I mean? They can make it happen. It's not like you're going to need that 12 weeks because you've kind of kept your, your, your body fat low. And I see, I mean, Camille, you're one, you're probably one of the hallmarks. I see you all the time during the year. And even at our, you know, when you did the seminar in Santa Cruz, what was the biggest thing was everybody thought you were getting ready for the Arnold's, you know, because <laughs> Well, no, I know, but, but, but that's because every, I've never seen you out of, out of shape. shape. What I think is, yes. Ever. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. No. that tells me that that's, that's where you, I mean, as an athlete, that's where you want to be. Right. That way, when you're getting ready for a show, it's not, you're not so focused on weight loss. You're focusing yes. on a very slight reduction in body fat because you don't have a whole lot to lose, but being able to do that slowly while keeping the muscles. Yeah. Oh, otherwise you, you start to lose that. And it, and that's when I think a lot of people's conditioning starts to suffer. And then yeah. you got to play all those games peak week and you yes. end up working worse anyways. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ab hands down. Absolutely. Um, I will never, 
never forget. And I should have, because Noelle was, you know, the other night she was saying to me, think of a funny story. And I told something about JM. I couldn't think of anything I wanted, to, you know, that <laughs> But I just thought of something now, and you probably don't even know if anybody will remember, but this girl's name is Susie Curry. She was one of our first fitness uh, competitors, always at the top. Her and Kelly Ryan battled for years at the Olympian at the Arnold. Anyways, her first show overseas was, uh, she was still an amateur, was our world championships. And when we got over there, the athletes got the day before my Ted and I got there. We actually got, got there a day later. And my bodybuilding women, they had all, they, they were, they were seasoned competitors. So I wasn't worried about them, like where they could find food, you know what I mean? And getting them what they want. We didn't have the convenient, you know, there was no microwaves in hotel rooms at back then. And stuff, you know? <laughs> um, <except laughs> but I'll never forget. I, you know, we ran into Susie and her mother actually came with her. And I'll never forget. I said to Susie about, you know, are you able to find food? I was really worried about her because I knew, you know, she had never really traveled or anything. And she's like, um, oh, there's amazing rest around here and I'm like and you can find food that you need for you know for I just said for your diet and she looked at me and she just said am I supposed to diet for this and I went uh just won the overall at the team universe what did you do at the team universe she said oh I didn't diet for that one either I don't what do you mean do diet I don't diet mm -hmm. wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow uh-huh wow swear, I, that's a true story. And there were 73 girls in that, sh in that competition and she ended up winning. Sandy, yep. you know what that reminds me of? And I'm only bringing this up because I know you were there at the uh, 2019 Tampa Pro. And the, the girl who won bikini, she had, um, I'm blanking on the name right now. She came out and Bob Ciccarello was interviewing her on the stage. And he asked her about her diet for this. And she said that she had only dieted for three weeks. And, you know, immediately the entire crowd couldn't believe it. And yes. no one liked her or liked yes. her at the moment because they were like, you dieted for three weeks and you came in and won the Tampa Pro. And <laughs> Well, that's what I said to Susie. When she said that to me, I did. I said to her, I said, do me a favor. Do not say this to any of the girls back <laughs> I did. I, I was like. I was like, I could not, I'm serious. I could not believe it. And if you're a fitness competitor, maybe hopefully Whitney's list will, will see this. Or <laughs> well, because I didn't back then, um, if you go to international stuff, the, they always have some, a head judge like is on stage. So I was actually the person on stage. So I wasn't off stage. I didn't see like any really of the routines or anything, you know what I mean? Or any of the, you know, the comparisons and stuff. Cause I was the person on stage, but Ted, my husband, again, he's the only American judge, but he was in the audience. So when we got done, I said to him, how do you think Susie, you know, did and stuff? He said, it, it's saying that she's got to be first or second. It's, you know, she's right there and stuff. So now in the evening when we came back, okay, because um, we, at that time, we judged 50 in the morning, 50 at night. So when we came back, I, now I was off the stage. So, because um, they, I think they only did like the top 10 or what, you know, whatever. So I'm watching. And when they got done, I said to Ted, I said, oh my God. I said, her routine was, I mean, not being partial, I said, her routine was like 10 times better than everybody else. He goes to me, yeah, but that wasn't the routine she did this morning. I went, what? He goes, that wasn't even close to the routine she did this morning. So she ended up winning, like I said, but when I went backstage, I said to her, Ted said you did a different routine. She said, yeah, I was watching the girl, Sandy. She, and the first thing she said to me though, oh, wasn't I allowed to do that? I said, no, no, you can change your routine. I said, but I said, he said, oh, I was watching. Everybody looked like their routine was much harder than mine. So she said, I just redid it this afternoon. <laughs> gotcha. You don't diet and you just redid your fitness thing and you just. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. And I swear that is all, they, they, that is definitely all a true story. I'm not lying at all. Absolutely. That's a yeah. good one. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure Whitney sees this one. <laughs> She'll get a good crack out of this. Yeah, and, and, and the top fitness girls, tell them that they need to change their, their fitness routine from the morning to the night. <laughs> right. If, before finals, please. New routine. Yes, yes. Before finals, yes. <laughs> yeah. when, I, when, I get, when, I'm, when I'm getting ready for either the Olympia or the Arnold's, and I'm, you know, kind of going through my little bit of nervous thoughts that I might have in my head, I think about the fitness girls, and I'm like, okay, you know, all you have to do is walk out in, on stage and these fitness girls have to do that plus do this crazy routine you can do this 
<laughs> oh, absolutely. And you know they're carb depleted. You know what I mean? Yes. 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 It's amazing. It is mm-hmm. amazing. Oh, yeah. Especially <laughs> when you're watching the Arnold and Olympia levels. Oh. I, I don't, it's fascinating how they're oh, so I've, lean. I've said it, and I don't mean to take anything away from anybody, you know, other competitors, but I've always, I mean, obviously, I've always said the fitness, you know, our fitness athletes are just truly amazing. They are. They yeah. really, yeah. really are. Yeah. A tr- true athlete. It's very impressive. Very mm-hmm. impressive. Yes. No, absolutely. Well, Sandy, thank you so much for coming on to talk with us. And we could obviously talk for hours. <laughs> I, well, you know, actually, I was just, I was just going to, I was just going to say that obviously this is not, a, this is not hard for me to do, but I do. I love, I mean, I love the sport. You know what I mean? I, I, I do. And, you know, obviously my heart's at the end, you know, the NPC, um, you know, it's because obviously being around Jim, he's, he, he's an athlete at heart and he never, he ne- I, I, I mean, I could tell you story after story about where, you know, that he's always, he's always stood up for athletes. I mean, you don't know it at the time because it's behind the scene, you know, the scene stuff, yeah. but you know, it's all, oh my God, it's, I, I can't tell you how many times, like I'd say, you know, well, they did this or they did that because I'm a rules person type thing, you know, especially in the, when we first started and he'd be looking at me and go, Sandy, they're an athlete. <laughs> it's, just let it go it's fine you know what I mean and I'd be like, well, that's, why do we have that rule if we're not you know you know but, he, you know but that but I think that's why the NPC got to be where it is is because really the top person really really I mean cares he always you know what I mean he always did genuine yeah, yeah. He, yes he really you know and you know honestly that's what I see in Tyler I see you know yeah. what I mean yeah he he takes such an interest in the athletes and I'll, I mean, even at 25, he'll stop and say, you know, you, you know, cause he obviously has all the back, you know, between being mentored by his grandfather, you know, and, and, and Steve and stuff, you know, he, you know, he'll say, Oh, I think, you know, if you change your posing here, it'll just help, you know what I mean? It'll give, and you know what I mean? And he stops to do that and he'll stop, you know, Camille, you saw it in Sacramento afterwards, yeah. even when they were going to leave before the end, I mean, he stopped and talked to all the pros because the pros, he left after the pros and the pros were all done. So he stopped backstage and he talked to all those pros and stuff that, you know, were real, you know, around and stuff. And I think that's what, you know, helps our organization make it, you know, make it what it is because we do have a lot of people, you know, at the top that really do, you know, because we think we come from being an athlete. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's very obvious the passion is there, and that's why it's continuing to evolve and grow. Thrive. Yeah. 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 So, Tyler, if you're watching, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just another thing that he can owe me for. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make sure he gets the memo. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Sandy. This has been so informative, so great. Sorry, go ahead, Camille. One last question before (laughs) we're asking everybody, what show are you and Ted watching on Netflix or TV right now during quarantine? Oh my God. Well, one of the, for me, it's my sister and I, we binged watched it when we were in Palm Springs. Like I said, she was with, there's five of us, but she was the only one that came out because of this quarantine. And now we wish they all would have came out. We could have been quarantined out here all together. Uh, but we watched uh, Grace and Frankie. Oh, love, I love that show. Oh it's my so gosh. Cute. <laughs> uh, to, to realize that Joan, Jane Fonda is over 80 years. Uh, just, and they, her and Lily, both are directors and producers. Just, again, um, just ama- amaz- amazing, amazing, um, amazing. But for me, I'm a Big Bang person. I love, I love Big Bang. Um, uh, love sex in the city. I like a lot of the old comedy. I like comedy. All right. Yeah. 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 Grace and Frankie is hysterical. I started oh. watching it on the plane back from to and from the Arnold's and then I started just watching it ever since. <laughs> yeah, my, one, my, one of my sisters got us started last year. So last year, I think it was season one and two. So we binge watched that. And then this year we did, did, did again, whole 13 episodes, like in a week and a half. And we're like, why did we do this so fast? We still have another week to go. <laughs> right. Grace, Grace and Frankie. We're asking everybody and getting getting uh getting ideas for what to watch next. Oh, I know. I I text everybody to just say anything new on Netflix or Amazon. I need something to watch. We just watched the show called The Money Heist, which was really good. Was and it The Money Heist? We're about right. to start it. 
really good. And then, oh, that new one called Waco. Waco just came out on Netflix, and that was really good. Real? Oh, good. That'll give me two things to <laughs> look at. It's a completely different point of view from what we all heard about Waco. It was, uh -huh. pretty, it was pretty mind blowing. Hmm. Oh, good. Thank you. I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look at, I have to look at that. One of the yeah. ones, if you like stand up comedy, um, I mean, a lot of the big ones I, I like too, but somebody had told me, I didn't know about Steve Manicalso or something. I think, I'm not saying it right, but Italian guy again. Sebastian. No, no, it's not. No, not yes. Sebastian. Yes, yeah, Sebastian's. Yes, Sebastian Mana Scalo or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's from, from Chicago. Yes, yes. Yes, because he. Yeah. But when he when he first came out, because one of my again one of my sisters told me about it, and so my sister and I that was out in Palm Springs, we turned him on, and so we're watching it. And when he came out, I said, "Okay, well, you know, he's from the Bronx, some or Brooklyn." <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, I mean, don't don't he? And then when I watched like one or another, you know, another. Uh, episode and i'm like he go, he was when he was do, he came back to chicago and he was like, about growing up here and i went oh no 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 somebody transplanted you you oh, sound like yeah. new york all the way honey oh yeah and to wow. where in chicago he's like hoffman estates i believe if i remember correctly which is 25 minutes outside of the city too so people definitely don't have that thick of an accent there no and um doesn't he sound he just sounds he i would have i would have put a thousand dollars on that one if somebody said where do you think he's from it's like oh my god he's got to be from somewhere in new york you know brooklyn Bronx, somewhere down there and and just the way so yeah he's 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 i thought i think he's good you oh know he's I mean? great he's yeah. great yeah. Yeah. yeah that one out too <laughs> uh, yeah i feel like we've gone through all the comedians <laughs> oh. I know we were actually supposed to go see, but obviously now it's not going to happen. It was actually supposed to be the Sunday when I came back from the Pittsburgh because um, Gabriel Inglisi, who we love to see, was out going to be out in the desert. You know? Oh, and, fun! Oh, yes. All these summer plans. You oh know, my god! And, and can we just say that this is my first summer that I am home <laughs> and can't do anything either. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm I, sure I, the same's for you. <laughs> absolutely. And the thing that upsets me, I want to say something else, but I, we're being recorded here. Um, <laughs> is, well, because like I said, I have, four, you know, I have four other sisters and they all live within 10, 15 minutes of each other. You know, so the one thing nice is we do meet at video chat like twice a week together and stuff. But, you know, they all go into the nursery to get, you know, uh, you know, plants and stuff and they're going for coffee and stuff. And I'm like, okay. I am I am coming out because I was supposed to come out May to judge a show out in the eastern part of Pennsylvania. I said I'm coming. That's the only flight I didn't cancel. I said I'm coming anyway. I don't give a shit. I need to get out of here. I'll wear a mask all the way to Philly. I don't care. <laughs> so you know, so Zoom for Easter, we did. My whole family did a, like a Zoom share, so you can actually bring your whole family and share screens. It's so much fun. It's a Zoom party. Oh, I'm gonna have to do that because we do that on my sister. Like I said, my sisters and I just do the the five of us will get on. You know, we do Facebook uh, Messenger only because I guess we were gonna do Instagram, but Instagram you have to all have Apple, and some of us are Android. You know what I mean? And some so some of my sisters didn't have an Apple product. But I'm gonna look at the Zoom. Check out the Zoom because then you yeah. can get everybody in the same uh, invite, and then you can do uh, shared screen, and it's a lot of fun. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to see all these new things that I'm, I'm learning. And, really, and seriously, this is what people should be doing, you know, in their, you know, really using this time, you know what I mean? Like you said, I've learned a lot about Instagram that I, you know, that I didn't know and stuff. And it, it just, you know what I mean? It just makes you a better person. Um, yeah. I bought my husband a drone. Don't ask me why. You, everybody knows that he's got you know, not a technology bone in his body. And so... <laughs> I bought him one and then, you know, who? So then I thought if to, to try it, I could show him and that never happened. So I haven't done it like in two years. So now I'm out flying the drone a couple times a week. <laughs> stuff, that's, you know. Awesome. That's, that, that had that's a learning, so cool. big learning curve. Oh my God. Absolutely. Trying to, oh my God. Yes. It's a big learning curve. Yes. And I sent, <laughs> I sent Tyler last week because he posted something on Instagram. I was going to post on Instagram, but he posted because I guess Tamer had gone shooting and posted something. So then T Tyler posted a picture of his, um, you know, target. So then I sent him a picture of mine and told him the 68 year old lady killed him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you should do with your drone is have, um, have like 
before you do a show, have it like kind of like you can create content uh, right down to the venue and even oh. learn how to fly it indoors. You can get some cool shots for uh, video. Um, Camille always loves to share ideas. <laughs> you know what, so, see that, but you know what? That's why I don't have my own business because I'm the per seriously, I'm the person that you want working for your business. Cause I am, I will tell you, I'm the, one of the hardest workers you'll ever have coming up with ideas and eh, not my forte. <laughs> we <laughs> Makes two of us. <laughs> so yeah, I'll call, I'll call Camille and pick her break. I usually do that with Joe. I always tell him every time he posts something, I always say, I'm going to steal that. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I do want to say, if you don't mind, if, yeah, of if, course. If, is um, and I said it on Instagram. One of the things that we are going to do, Spectrum is going to do, is um, for the Sacramento, which is a little bit earlier. It's October instead of November this year, uh, just because of venue problems. Um, but we're doing, um, Steve Weinberger will be there as one of our head judges. Um, but we're going to, and all the people, because we last year with Tamer now, Muscle Contest doing the Masters USA, we're yeah. having a lot more West Coast athletes competing in the Masters divisions. So what yeah, we'll do great. is we have. Like, yeah, like last year, I think in the in the Masters 35 bikini, we had six or eight classes at a regional show. Oh, yeah, we had a lot. So this year, what we're going to do is like whoever wins the 35 bikini, the 40, whatever the, whatever the classes break up age-wise, and this will be for all seven divisions, we'll do one pose down, though, to award uh, entry fee to the Masters USA. And then at the San Antonio, which will be November 7th, uh, where Tyler will be the head judge, um, we're going to then pay the seven open class winners uh, entry into the universe, which will be the next weekend. That's, that's awesome. I did hear you and Noelle talking about that. Um, that's so awesome that Spectrum is doing that for the athletes. I think Joe does that at the border class too. I think that really helps a lot with the athletes. Where do you think I stole it from? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hey, okay to share ideas. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ted always says to me, every time I talk to Joe, he always says, please do not talk to him. Every time you talk to him, he costs me money. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're good ideas. No, especially I, now with all well, this that, going on. Well, you know what, though? And that's what I thought, because even in Texas now, we're doing a lot of giveaways, which, I, again, I got that idea from Joe, because a lot of the sponsors down there, the supplement companies, are willing to give out. So we're able to get, you know, give athletes, you know, sometimes four or $500 worth of product you know, when money is tight for everybody, yeah. you know what I mean? We are all in this together. We all need to help, you know, each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it might even encourage some people to come out and compete that were maybe on the fence about it. And that's really great to hear about Steve coming out to judge. I think um, I've seen in the past couple of years with, you mentioned earlier on like East coast versus West coast. And I think that was, that was like the case for a long time, but there's definitely a lot of camaraderie and coming together with the coasts and NorCal and SoCal, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I seriously love Tamer, love muscle contest. Could not, you know, let me be happier that, you know, that we all, you know, we do that. We all work to, you know, we work together and stuff. I mean, obviously this is going to be a, a, a hard year because a lot of shows now are going to be on top of each other. Um, yeah. But no, we, you know, we work with them all the time on trying to like what we could do to make it easier on, you know, the athletes and also on our trainers. Cause especially being in California, a lot of the trainers go to a lot of the shows. So we've been really, really trying to work together, you know, the best we can to, you know, to make it easier, you know, on the athletes and on the, on the trainers. Yes, absolutely. Love, love it. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. You can really see just more and more each each year, each season, if you will, the camaraderie between just everyone, I feel like, and especially now being global, it's just becoming such more of a unified sport. And it's just so awesome because it's so welcoming and it, it's welcoming to all ages, to all body types, to, you know, any background. Yeah. It's so great. Because I mean, A, uh, you know, uh, uh, weight training development for anybody is a good thing. And obviously to, I, you know, I've said this all along for 40 some years now, bodybuilding nutrition, it, 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 seriously, it is the most healthy nutrition, you know, but you know, by far, you know, to Absolutely. anybody else. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And will you guys have information on the spectrum fitness productions website for this? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, as soon as Sandy learns now, Sandy's learning, uh, paint the paint program too. So, um, <laughs> 
Referring to yourself in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I mean, and don't get me wrong, because I do do, I mean, I did my master's, you know, online and stuff. But anyways, but yeah, so I'm going to get out two new flyers for both of them to put that information on. Because like I said, the, it, the San Antonio is easy. If you win what open class of whatever it is, bodybuilding, men's physique, whatever, we'll pay your entry to the universe. You know what I mean? Um, or we'll reimburse them because the universe is the next weekend. So if they already, you know, are signed to go there, we'll pay their, you know, I'll reimburse them their entry fee, not a problem. And the master's though is just a little different because it'll be the master, whoever wins the master's overall. So it, we will have like a little pose down between like the age groups in each division. And then awesome. somebody, yeah, then one person will get the paid entry. That's, That's great. fun. Well, we'll make sure that we put those, all those links then um, on this so that people have direct links once they watch this, they can go and click it and see all that information, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And, and those who are watching, um, Spectrum Fitness Productions puts on amazing shows. It's a lot of fun. It's like family. So if you haven't competed there before or gone and watched, definitely check them out. You know what? No offense, Camille, because only because, and again, I don't want, I'm sorry, hopefully you don't get upset with this. I don't want to bring age up, but you know what? You what? look, well, you, when you text me today, I had to wash my hair really quick because I totally forgot. I had to put, <laughs> I put my eyelashes on and you look just like, like you've just been to the gym and you look amazing. Is it, doesn't she? Yeah. Gym, but <laughs> it's again, of course. It's like, I, I could hate you. Aw. Well, this, maybe it's just like a little, I don't know. Thank you. A I was sweat glow. Thinking about you. <laughs> maybe it's the Zoom. It gives us a, like a nice glow. <laughs> oh, not my picture on this side, honey. I got news for you. Well, thank you, Sandy. That's, that's very sweet. I think, well, you know what? It, honestly, it takes about two in the afternoon to finally be like, all right, time to get the hair out of the bun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if you want to see, oh, if you, because, you know, like I said, we live on a ranch. Okay. There's nobody here. But usually when I'm not away judging, I don't leave my property. I have all these cheap tights that have our spandex because my dog here doesn't get on it. I have my Christmas tights on with the top that's plaid. I have my hair up in a, in a clip. Oh, yeah. And, and we don't, makeup does not see this face only when I'm doing this. So, it, yeah. So when you text me today, whoo. There was a lot of work the last hour and a half. Well, I feel like we need to. I feel like we need to brush up our skills because when we come out of the cage, we're gonna be like, I kind of forget about like barkers and. <laughs> well, no, I said what was I forget which one I did first. I think it was with Noel. It was like, oh my God, I have not put eyelashes on in like six weeks. I hope I can still do this. <laughs> you have to remember how. <laughs> Thank God it's like riding a bike. It was okay. But yeah, like my face, I, I know my face was kind of like going, what the hell are you doing to us now? And then when, you're, when your husband sees you, they're like, where are you going? Oh, he said, oh, he always says to me, he always goes, when I'm like, like I said, when I do the Instagram, he always says to me, is this the real Sandy? He said, I thought the real ones the one I saw the last six days. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets, it makes us feel somewhat human again. Right. Now, how's your, can I ask how your daughter's doing? Oh, thank you for asking about her. She's doing, you know, she's doing good. She's adjusting, but um, it's challenging. It's really yeah, it's gonna be hard at that age. Yeah. So she's she's using Zoom um, for her classes, and luckily she goes to a, a private school where they have a structure for them each day. So like they log in at nine in the morning and they have you know their different classes they come back at 1 30 for spanish and they have you know their curriculum but it's hard because she's she turns uh, 11 next week and she's they're very social but they can't see each other and they the way they interact with each other is through like video games and we're trying to really limit the screen time yeah so it's challenging we adopted oh, a her, but yeah, yeah no but, absolutely now, and how's your dog doing hey, hey chris Great. He's doing good. This he's our little good. mascot. Yeah, this is our mascot. <laughs> and Buster, the one who um, has cancer, he's he's doing on, really, really good. Come here, Bubba. Come here. Come here, Bubba. Come here. They're, they love having us home all the time. Oh my oh my dogs and my cat. <laughs> oh my god. They think they died and went to heaven. 
Oh, I absolutely. believe it. They're just like, this is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is oh, yeah. This is Buster. This is my little Oh, house. look right. it. Yes. <laughs> but they're doing, they're doing really good. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. But I just want the kids, it's just got to be, you know, because my sisters all have, you know, grandkids and stuff. Out, by the way, Sandy. That product is amazing, isn't it, though? It is. It is. Yeah. I actually told somebody else, the guy that was working on my shoulder from Arizona, and his, his dog has cancer, too, you know what I mean? And stuff, and he was at the point that he was just kind of, like, laying around and stuff, and so I sent them some, and then I saw him the following week, and even, I forgot, to be honest, I forgot that I had sent it, and when I, when I came in, the first thing he said to me, he goes, my kids thought that our dog, I forget what the dog's name is, but that he, that I took him to the doctor and they got rid of the cancer because wow. he's up, move, yeah, well, he's up and moving around and he had a lot more energy. You know what I mean? Wow. Which he, yeah. And, yeah. Yes. And yeah, Buster, so, I mean, Buster acts like he's, uh, he acts like he's, he's a puppy. He yeah. acts like he's a, a puppy. So yeah. it's been Good. great. Absolutely. And it's just nice that you are at home with them too. You know what I mean? It's yeah. nice that, yeah, absolutely. Lots of walks and enjoying. So, Real, real quick, uh, true story. We're we're quarantined for like a week, and and you know we're kind of making fun of it at this particular point, not really that worried about it. And all of a sudden, Oreo, this little guy, gets ringworm, and <laughs> and so we're like, we get quarantined now. We have ringworm. <laughs> so, but he's cool. Oh Went to the doctor. He's fine. Everybody's cool. Now everybody knows we had ringworm. <laughs> Second announcement of that. Well, I was, really, you know, it was really nice because, you know, my, I, like I said, I got pictures and stuff and, you know, everybody now is cooped up in their own homes. And I'm like, and I'm the luckiest one because Ted and I, we have two different uh, houses on our property. So I spent half of the day, I spent half there of the day. There you go. My, yes. Me and my cat spent half of the day at my mother-in-law's house all by ourselves. <laughs> you know what? Wow. I need that set up. Wow. <laughs> I wish I have I have the best I have the best setup. There is no way of no way about it. Absolutely. Yes. You do. That is necessary for these circumstances. Yep. And and you know, I mean Camille knows this and Ted built us our own gym. So we have a full freestanding gym on our property too. So and 25 acres to run on. So I, yeah, I really don't have any You have not been impacted with your fitness routine at all. No, except that I'm just home all the time. <laughs> yeah. You start talking. But no, my fitness routine is actually better than it's ever been. <laughs> That's awesome. You had mentioned in Noelle's um, live stream that this is a time where people should take advantage of this and make changes. I thought that was a really great message for people to hear. Yeah, because like I said, it's, you know, most times when I say to that athlete, you know what I mean? Like you need a little bit more here, you need a little bit more there. It's like nobody wants to take that time because they already in their mind have a show next month or two months. You know what I mean? And now you knew it was, you know I mean? When it started out, you, you had to know logically it was going to be at least two months. You know what I mean? And things are not going to go right back to get, you know what I mean? So this was the time to work on those body parts and you can still stay closer to contest shape than maybe you would have been, but, and, and still grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this yeah. Is, this is probably the longest off season that some people have ever taken. Yes. No, I know. And that's why I said it, 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 you know, in a lot of ways it people should really, um, you know, make, you know, make good time, you know, good time with what, you know, with this, you know, with this off time. Yes. Yeah. And I thought that was an amazing uh, piece of advice. I think we're all just trying to keep, you know, like, a lot of you know the professional athletes and like yourself and Sarah and different platforms are really trying to keep everybody motivated and united and I thought that was an awesome piece that you added there. Yeah, I do. I, I really you know as much as like I said, I can't. I hate looking at myself, but it's a nice way. But it is because we're. I mean, by nature, especially our country. I mean, obviously, all the technology makes it. I mean, obviously, ten times better than it would have been if it would have been you know twenty five thirty years ago. But we're still social yeah. and you know what I mean and stuff. And so doing the videos and doing the, you know, the Instagram stuff and stuff, I think helps, keep, especially if you have somebody that is more a single person or maybe, you know what I mean? And stuff. Right. Not surrounded by other like-minded yeah. individuals. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Huge impact. Well, Sandy, we could talk to you all day. This has been a lot of fun. And 
give send Ted our best. We uh, I was, yeah. We've, we miss seeing you guys at the Governor's Cup, and we just miss every, seeing everybody. So please, oh, I'm seeing you all over the country. <laughs> yeah, we do. We miss we miss being part. You know, we all do. We do really miss being part. You know, being part of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can't wait. But well, it'll be here before we know it, so we should all enjoy the downtime that we'll never see again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> well, stay healthy and. Okay. Lots of love to you. Thank you for coming on our yeah, show. Thank we you so much, Sandy. Appreciate it. Oh my God, I never mind. Anyways, take care. Thank you both. And I'm both glad everybody in your family is safe and healthy. Yes, stay thank healthy. You. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> okay. Wow, that was awesome. That was real. That was, yeah. I love Sandy. And she's the best. I mean, when you talk to her, it's, she's, you, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of people from a competitor standpoint, they see her as just like this authority figure and Super a little bit of Yeah. And when you talk to her, she's such a, a cool down to earth woman. Totally. Like it's just, she's another human, you know, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people have different perspectives with all that, even when it comes to like, you know, athletes that they admire or something, but we all put our one leg inside the pant, whatever the fucking saying is. <laughs> <laughs> Brain isn't working. Oh, um, and she's, uh, she's phenomenal. So that was awesome having her on here and Sandy, thank you so much for being on our show. Yes. Thank you so much for all your time and all the knowledge and stories. Those were so entertaining. <laughs> Hopefully everyone gets a good kick out of them like we did. <laughs> so Camille, what do you have on your agenda for today? Well, uh, we just kind of did it. That wraps it up for the day then. It's time for bed now. <laughs> <laughs> Back to bed. What'd you say? Back to bed. Oh, I know. That's the truth. Yeah, it's it's been gloomy here all day, so my uh, sleep pattern will definitely be off tonight. It's like if it's gloomy during the day, I'm up all night. I don't know. You know what? I'm I'm sorry it's gloomy there because being in quarantine and having crappy weather, that's horrible. Like that is depressing. Hold on, Hold on one second. One second. Yeah, you got it. Sorry. Were we talking too loud? Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those, Mom, I'm on the phone. <laughs> it's kind of how I feel sometimes, but no. <laughs> We're good. Trying to find a little corner. <laughs> Just need to make sure I heard that one. Um, if, only we had a, a, if only we had a second house on the property to live in like Sandy, that'd be amazing. I would be there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Come together to watch our show. Just Ozark <laughs> and then back to the bed. <laughs> check, out, check out the money heist and we wait. Will, because we finished Ozark way quicker than we thought we would. And I was like, I think this is the last episode. And he was like, no. And I then know. I said, we'll have to watch Money Heist. And then we went to start it. And I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. We can start this tomorrow. It, and we haven't started it. It's yet. really, so it's a voiceover, but it's so good. We, yeah. And then a new movie came out called Extraction on Netflix. And that is like, ooh, really intense. And good. Ooh. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Any good actors? Yeah. But you guys will love it, actually. Really? <clears throat> okay, great. Yeah. I'm all about it. Um, well, I feel as if, as I'm sidetracking and then coming back to what we should be talking about, I feel as if this episode was just super long, super informative in itself. So we're not going to keep you guys any longer. Agreed. Rewatch it, watch it again, share it, spread the word out that, you know, everyone can come here and get a little bit more information, a little bit more in-depth uh, feel, if you will, for who Sandy Williamson is and her background, her history. And then, of course, we'll keep bringing you guys entertainment every week. 
Yeah. We had nothing else to do, people. <laughs> um, on Wednesday, we have Adam with Team Elite Physiques. Yes. Um, yeah. Rolling them out. Yeah, we're really excited. So, you, I mean, I feel like at this point, we've recorded so many and done so many interviews. I couldn't even tell you who you're going to be watching next or before this. So, yeah. Well, the last episode um, is James with Team Atlas. Right. But isn't, didn't we record, didn't we interview someone after that too? India. Yeah. See? You know, we are, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. And India is going to be coming out, I think, um, after this episode. All right. <laughs> All right. We are cruising along, guys. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Um, yeah. Camille, I'm not that funny today. <clears throat> Hopefully you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. That was a great look at Oreo. Just <laughs> Mom, are you done? I did a live workout and this is what he does to me in the ground the whole entire time. His little ears perk up. I know. He loves me. Mom. Aww. All right. Well, Sarah Lyon, it was great talking to you. Camille Periot, it was phenomenal talking to you. Brought to you by Maximum Beauty. <laughs> All your competition needs. All your competition needs. 20, 2020 season. 2021 season might as well start preparing for it and beyond right <laughs> another episode of the bikini show we are signing out peace